Hey guys, welcome back. Now continuing in our deep learning learning journey. Now here, what we are going to do is we are going to create the objects that is called as train data generator and test data generator. Now I have talked about this concept of train data generator and test data generator already in my previous video. I'll share the link in the below description and we are going to make use of that concept over here in this video. Now while explaining, I'm going to give you a quick overview as what it does. But if you need more information, I highly recommend you to check out that video guys. All right, so let's get started. Now, what we have done till now in our deep learning learning journey. So we were trying to build the classifier. So here we are just getting the data from my Dropbox. And once it's done, I'm just going to perform the unzipping, removing that zip file to save the memory, then importing the necessary libraries, followed by visualization of our data set. So in our data set, so in our previous session, we have seen how we can visualize the data set and we have observed how many number of images that we have for each class. And this is, and this is followed by creating a function, which will actually help us in visualizing the random data that is present in my data set. Okay. So we have just displayed three random images of cats and dogs. And this is how the random images that has been picked from my training directory look like. Okay, and this is followed by splitting our data set into two parts. Okay, I think it's three parts, isn't it? So we have split our data set into three parts. One is my training data, which will have 70% of my entire data set and 15% for my validation data and another 15% for my test data. So that is the split that we have looked at. So here I'm just going to specify and create some folders and this is followed by uh, learning all the various logics that we have learned till now. Okay. And after that, so we have actually performed the split using, uh, using the, using the code that we have written from scratch and then yes. So we have performed the split into train test and valid data. And once everything is done, so we have seen, uh, how the distribution of data is present. So we could see that. So 70% of the data is over here in my training data and 15, 15% each on my validation data as well as my test data. All right. So this is how our learning journey was. Now let's continue and let's make sure and let's make sure that the data that we have, it is ready to apply on our deep learning neural network. Now, as you clearly see the data set that I'm having, it is in my hard disk. So even though it's not in my physical hard disk, it is in a, it is in a hard disk space, which has been allocated for me. Okay. It's in a disk space that has been allocated for me from my Google server. Now, one common scenario that I could do is I could load everything into my RAM and then perform the training on, on the data set that is present on the RAM. But as you can clearly see, I have more than 4,000 images that I have in my data set. Now, if I load all those 4,000 images uh, over here into my RAM, so most of my RAM space will be consumed and obviously during the training. So if my model requires a RAM, it will not have the sufficient RAM left. And obviously I'm going to get an error. That means the restart I mean, runtime will get restarted. Now, in order to avoid such errors, when we are working with images data, especially with convolutional neural network, we'll make use of data generator, which is present inside our TensorFlow. More specifically, we are going to make use of image data generator. Now, if I open up the documentation for this image data generator, so this is the official documentation page of image data generator, which is present inside tf.krs.preprocessing.image. So this will help us in pre-processing our image. The best part is it will help us in pre-processing our data set as per our requirement. Now, while doing the pre-processing, I can perform the rescaling as per my own scale, because as you already know, when I'm dealing with the images, I'll be having the pixel values in the range of zero to 255. So if I want to scale it down in the range of zero to one, obviously I have to perform the rescale. And one of the common way that we can do the rescale is divide everything by 255. And I can write it over here inside this image data generator, which will automatically perform the rescaling as per my requirement. Not only that, so when I'm performing the training, if I want to perform data augmentation as well, when I say augmentation, it's about uh, artificially creating the data using my existing training data. 
So if I want to perform that augmentation as well, in such scenarios, I can make use of various functions. So I can make use of rotation range, I can make use of zoom range, I can make use of uh, shear range, I can make use of horizontal flip, I can also make use of vertical flip. See, you can clearly see we have various options that are actually available for me to perform this data augmentation. And that is what this image data generator is written or uh, or it's it's here for guys so it will help me in generating the batches of tensor image data with real-time data augmentation so while loading the data in terms of batches it will perform this data augmentation real time and that's the best part guys now the requirement that we have is i want to load the images from my directory so what we normally do is we create the object using this image data generator and once we create the object with the required parameter values that we specify inside this image data generator, we are going to call the method of flow from directory because I have all the images present in my directory. So I'll use this method and I'll specify flow from directory. And then here inside this flow from directory, I'll specify my training directory. That means where exactly that I have these images are present in my hard drive. So I have to mention my complete path. And this is followed by target size. That means while loading the data in terms of batches, what is the resize operation that I want to do over there? Okay. And this is followed by classes. So here I can specify, I can manually give what are the classes that is present. And normally we'll leave it to default because it will actually load the classes by looking into the class folders that we have. And we have something called as a class mode. Now by specifying the class mode, we can control how the classes to be determined. So in our example, we are working with the task of binary classification. So I can say class mode as binary classification that is binary. By default, it has been read as a categorical data. Okay, now if it is being read as a categorical data, that means by default, it is being read as, as the task of multi-class classification. Now, even in this scenario, it can be read as multi-class classification, but in such scenarios, I'll have to make use of the activation, which is suited for this multi-class classification, because obviously in such scenarios, I'll, I'll, ha I'll be required to have two neurons. But in my example, I want to do the binary classification. So I can specify it as class mode as binary and specify the last neuron with the sigmoid activation function. All right. So these are all things that we can do and we can also specify the batch size. Now by specifying the batch size, what it does is while loading the images, it just loads only that part. An example can be, it can load 32 random images from my training data set. And while loading those 32 images, so it will resize that images into the required shape and it will be read from the folders in the class mode, which I specify. And once the images are loaded, so whatever the document or the uh, commands that I'll be specif specifying over here inside this image data generator, so those will be executed. That means if I'm performing the rescale, it will do the res rescale. And if I mentioned horizontal flip and a vertical flip, it will perform horizontal flip or the vertical flip in a random manner. And it will also apply shear range, zoom range, and so on. So this is how that data gets loaded, guys. So let's do one thing. Let's implement it for our data set as well. I'm going to create my training data generator. So training data generator, and this is equal to, we have to first import it. I'll specify my imports in the same cell so that it is easier for you to refer. So I'm going to say it as from tensorflow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator. Okay, so this will take care of the import. And now I'm going to call this image data generator. So image data generator and inside the parenthesis first and the important thing I want to rescale. So I'll say rescale is equal to 1.0 divided by 255. All right. And then let's do one thing. Let's apply some rotation as well. So rotation range 0 0.3 and let's apply some horizontal flip as well. So horizontal flip as true and vertical flip as well. So vertical flip as true 
and I can also specify some zoom range as well zoom range as 0 0.4 okay and yeah so i'll keep it like this and i'm going to execute this image data generator all right so this object has been defined now i have to mention as where exactly i have my images and how it has to load for that i'm going to say it as okay my training data and then train data generator which is the operation which is the object that i have created earlier and on top of this i'm going to specify as flow from directory and my directory name is this is my training directory so data dir and under this train so this is my training data so i'm going to copy that path and i'll paste it over here so this is my training directory and i have the class mode as binary okay and in in, in my scenario uh, i'm going to resize the image so to resize the image i'm going to specify my target size as 224 comma 224 so this is going to define my training data now when i've run this so it says it has actually found 5603 images for my training data and it belongs to two classes all right now if i want to display the class indices in such scenarios i can say it as train data dot class indices and this is going to return me a python dictionary which says as okay for which label what is the value that i'm going to refer to okay cats will is zero docs is one next i'm going to create the object for validation data as well so i'm going to say valid data generator okay now for this valid data generator i don't have to do this uh, uh, like horizontal flip and vertical flip and all those things guys i just want to perform only the rescale that's it the reason because see while performing the validation i want to load the data as it is i don't want to do the augmentation over there because it's just a validation that i'm performing over there all right and then i'm going to specify as valid data and this valid data I'll just copy my uh, previous code, okay, and I'm going to modify it. So valid data path is this copy path. So I'll define my path where exactly my validation data is present, and even this validation data should be resized to the shape of 224 comma 224. And similarly, I'll perform the activity for my test data. So I'll say test data generator test underscore data and instead of valid it will be actually test so we have created three objects one is for training data another is for validation data and then the last one is for test data now that we have created the objects for training data validation data and the test data in the next video let's build the convolutional neural network model and then let's apply this data set and see how our model is performing so I'll see you next time guys.